What's good, Josh? We're on Spike again with another video. So, we're gonna check out the worst rated WrestleMania events of all time. This should be a very interesting one. I wanna see what's the top worst rated WrestleMania of all time by uh, Wrestling Bios. Appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. We're gonna get right into this one. It's a long video. Let's do this damn thing. <laughs> WWE's annual WrestleMania show is supposed to be the biggest event the company presents each and for every sure, year. For sure. Over the years, it's morphed into this giant weekend of wrestling action that attracts fans from countries all over the world, and the spectacle of WrestleMania itself is enough to draw fans in and sell tickets without a single match even being announced. Expectations around WrestleMania are always high, and the WWE have delivered exceptional WrestleMania shows in the past, but they've also produced some pretty abysmal Mania shows too that left fans a little disappointed. Mm. Today, I want to check out what fans voted for as the 10 worst WrestleManias in company history. Like the WCW hash rank matches video I put together previously, I use cage match to get our scores today. I think it's important to get a score from a group of fans rather than spewing my own personal bias all over mm -hmm. the place, but I will talk if I agree with the ranking or not. And just before we begin, WrestleMania 2 was included multiple times in the list due to it being held in different locations, so the score was obviously out and I've only included it once in this video. There's no point in including it multiple times. All right, let's get into this one, man. Number 10 is WrestleMania 12 from Anaheim, California. I talked about Mania 12 quite a bit on the channel. I covered it for the Reliving the War series, and yes, I can see why people wouldn't rank this Mania very highly. Business wasn't great in 1996, and improvements needed to be made in all aspects of the company, from overall presentation to new stars, from match bookings and the rivalries taking place. No <laughs> doubt the divisive 60-minute Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels match has lent itself to this low score. Fans either love it or hate it, and the negative crowd will always be louder than the positive crowd. Mm -hmm. But even though I like the Iron Man match, it's undeniable that a match of this length will cause the undercard to suffer due to time constraints. Add in the fact that Diesel and Undertaker went over 15 minutes too, excluding entrances, and you can imagine there wasn't much time for anything else really. Including Bret vs Shawn, this mania only had 6 matches, with one of those being a 1.5 minute squash. So Damn. yeah, Taker vs Diesel matches? and Hart vs Michaels are matches I enjoy, but as a complete WrestleMania package, the show does kinda suffer. At number 9, we have WrestleMania 29 from East Rutherford, New Jersey, headlined by John Cena vs The Rock after WWE promoted their previous match as once in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fans felt the wrong main event was booked and CM Punk should have headlined this event, but in saying that, I thought the CM Punk vs Undertaker semi main event match was pretty good. And I also thought that. No, it was good. I, I enjoyed their, their matches. In my opinion, I think it's. Highly underrated as uh one of the better one of the better Undertaker uh WrestleMania matches is in my opinion I think it's underrated. It's a pretty good match. Build up to that particular match was done pretty well. Watching the whole show back though, it does feel a little mediocre and a little empty. The Triple H versus Brock Lesnar match could have been better. Yeah, Alberto Del sure. Rio versus Jack Swagger for the world belt nowadays is completely forgettable. Not a great show to be honest, but I still recommend <laughs> checking out Punk versus Taker. That main event though was just way too predictable. Yeah, you knew it was gonna win. Good old WrestleMania John. 32 from Dallas, Texas comes in at number 8 and man I remember being so hyped for this mania due to the record setting crowd that was going to attend the Cowboys Stadium in 2016. Oh Roman boy. Reigns defeated Triple H oh for the WWE God. World Heavyweight Championship in the main event and the fans in attendance were still not prepared to cheer for Roman. No. Many felt around this time period that the big dog was being shoved down their throats and so the audience cheered for Hunter if they weren't just outright booing the match altogether. Yeah. It's a slow one for sure. It's just under half an hour long, and you do feel you've maybe wasted your time when the event comes to an end. It's a shame too because the show had so much potential with it being in such a large venue, but it did fall flat, and yeah. I agree that 32 is one of the low points in WrestleMania history. Brock For Lesnar sure. versus Dean Ambrose was terrible, an Undertaker versus Shane McMahon cell match that had an insane jump from the top of the cell remains largely forgotten. Honestly, yeah. many people think the opening ladder match with Zack Ryder 
Strider winning the IC title is the highlight of the whole show. <laughs> Facts. That At was number highlight, seven, so. we have WrestleMania Five coming from Atlantic City, New Jersey. The main event had a great build, and the whole WrestleMania was themed around the mega powers exploding in the headliner. Fans do remember the main event quite fondly, but it's practically everything that happened before the match that gives it a low score. Now, I will say that I enjoyed The Rockers vs Akeem and the Boss Man, and I also enjoyed Strike Force vs The Brain Busters, but yeah, it is a slog to get through, and it is also very bloated. The audience were pretty flat before Hulk Hogan made his entrance. We get the return of Piper's Pit here, but the long segment seems to be a big complaint about the show. I mean, it is a product of its time, and if you keep mm. your expectations in check, it isn't absolutely terrible. But do know what you're getting yourself into before committing 3 hours and 40 minutes of your day to watch this event. <laughs> Damn. He said, be prepared to be six, committed it's to it. WrestleMania 1 from Madison Square Garden, New wow. York City. The importance of Mania 1 in 1985 can't be overstated and the story behind the event coming together is also very fascinating. As the genesis of the biggest wrestling show of the year, WrestleMania 1 does kinda get put on a pedestal and, in a way, it also gets a bye ball in terms of criticism due to the magnitude of the historic show. Fans on cagematch.net have judged the show based on the matches that took place and oh. indeed, WrestleMania 1 does not feature the best wrestling matches in the That's world by crazy. a long shot. There's a great atmosphere in the garden for WrestleMania 1 though and when you mix in the importance of the event with the way this new idea was presented, I think WrestleMania 1 is still watchable. This is a pretty big success story after all and there's that thing about knowing where you've been to appreciate where you are now, but mm -hmm. you've got quite a few quick matches that offer around five to six minutes and a tag team main event that was hyped up pretty well but doesn't make for the best viewing experience nowadays. I appreciate this one for what it is and I think it gets by on the fact that it's the real granddaddy of them all. Mm -hmm. I can see why it's ranked so low and you gotta respect too that the matches really aren't up to par but I still like WrestleMania 1 quite a bit. At number 5, it's WrestleMania 27 from 2011, held in the Georgia Dome. A lot of ups and downs in this mm -hmm. one, as a great YouTuber may say. It starts off brilliantly with Edge defeating Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship. We get what I thought was a good no-holds-barred match yeah, between Triple H and The Undertaker. Pretty good. And I also didn't mind the main event all that much with The Miz successfully defending his WWE Championship against John Cena. But I can also name a lot of Mania main events that were better, you know? Yeah. It's another <laughs> Mania event that leaves you feeling kinda empty when it's all over. It gets totally dragged down with a Michael Cole vs Jerry Lawler match that even Steve Austin couldn't save, although it was funny watching Stone Cold laugh at what was going on. Of you course. then had The Rock hosting the event, which was another sore point for a lot of viewers. The Rock hosting Mania was fine, that part was okay, but many felt the great one took away from the main event when he interfered to cost John Cena the championship, essentially setting up the next WrestleMania main event while uh, simultaneously hurting this one. I Mania get, 27 I certainly isn't my well, favorite why was, WrestleMania. Why would say I that. wouldn't say it's awful though. Edge vs Del Rio, CM Punk vs Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes vs Rey Mysterio, and Triple H vs Undertaker are still worth a watch. Yeah, but as mentioned, you do leave this one feeling like there should have been more. WrestleMania 15 ranks in at number 4 and I was surprised to see this on our list yeah. today, but the more I think about it, the more I can understand why people didn't like it. Held in the first Union Center in Philadelphia, Mania 15's an early Attitude Era WrestleMania that at times felt like an extended episode of Raw's War. The main event features Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> winning the WWF Championship from The Rock and that's fine. Yeah. Practically any match these two would have instantly becomes a classic and even though sure. this is my least favourite match in The Rock vs Austin WrestleMania trilogy, it's still a solid main event. In between matches, you've got a lot going on though, with China turning her back on Kane and Triple H turning his back on X Pac. These kind of backstabbings rarely happened at WrestleMania, and at the time at least, I felt this kind of thing may have been more suited to weekly TV. I don't know, it sounds silly saying that heel turns and more elaborate storyline development shouldn't happen at Mania, and the big heel turn that happened at Survivor Series months prior went down really well, but I always remember being a bit surprised that they let this perceived breakup of D-Generation X happen at a WrestleMania show. Yeah. Shane McMahon vs X-Pac was entertaining though, I thought. <laughs> I also Shane. don't mind the opening triple threat hardcore match. 
but the show does have quite a few low points, including the Bart Gunn vs Butterbean Brawl for All contest. <laughs> Fans admired Bart Gunn for pulling out a few big upset victories in the 1998 Brawl for All tournament, and they were pretty disappointed when the WWF found nothing for Bart to do immediately after winning that tournament. The company then decided to bring him back to WrestleMania for a Brawl for All match against a professional boxer who knocked Bart out in around 30 seconds. You've also got an underwhelming Hell in a Cell match. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. He clocked him. That, bro, he, bro, that was wild. In the worst cell match up until that point, The Undertaker wrestled the big boss man in a 10 minute cell match that failed to excite fans. The post match public hanging of the big boss man yeah. didn't go down well either for many people. Yeah, that was kind of uh, a little bit too much there. In at number three, from the parking lot of Caesars Palace Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's WrestleMania 9, the world's largest toga party. This event <laughs> has been absolutely ripped apart over the years, and yeah, there's a lot to dislike about mm -hmm. Mania 9. But before we get all negative, I will say that the presentation of this WrestleMania, I thought was pretty good. Sure, you don't have the most die-hard wrestling fans in attendance, and I'm sure many of the announcers would have preferred not wearing a toga on pay-per-view television, but yeah. you can instantly recall what Mania 9 looked like thanks mm -hmm. to its unique venue and location. Another positive I want to bring up is the 14 minute Steiners vs Head Shrinkers match. I know people disagree but I really like that match. You imagine the Steiners and the Samoans taking part in a hard hitting contest and I thought they delivered in that respect. The opening Tatanka vs Shawn Michaels match isn't too bad either. I mean it's not the best opener in Mania history but it's fine for what it is. So why did the majority of fans see WrestleMania 9 as one of the absolute worst in WWF or WWE history? Well, when uh, things get low at Mania 9, they get really, really yeah. low. Jim <laughs> Gonzalez vs Undertaker is considered by many to be the worst match to ever take place at WrestleMania, <laughs> and certainly the worst when it comes to Undertaker's For undefeated sure. streak. Not even You've close. got some double doinking going on in the mid card, and <laughs> I'll admit I don't mind this as much as others due to the sheer silliness of it all. But then you've got old Hogan coming in at the end to swoop in and take away the WWF Championship. For many, that was and still is is completely unforgivable. Yeah. The WWF had problems in 1993 and not many kids wanted to talk about wrestling anymore. The company needed to move forward and usher in a new generation that could hopefully draw in new fans and recapture those who got tired of the same old stuff. It could potentially fail, but they had to do something. Bret Hart had gained a lot of momentum in WWF, Yokozuna was a new breed of villain that looked absolutely unstoppable, so you can imagine how deflating it was to have Hulk Hogan yeah. come down the ringside after Yokozuna beat Bret Hart just to take the belt away from Big Yoko in an yeah. impromptu final match. Hogan fans will argue that there was nothing wrong with this, the fans at Caesars Palace also seemed to enjoy the final moments of the pay per view, but it was incredibly short sighted, as proven in the weeks following Mania 9. That new generation would come to fruition as the year went on and it didn't really fix WWF's woes in terms of viewership and popularity. No one can say Hulk Hogan wasn't a draw anymore in 1993 because he most definitely was, but it feels like WWF were having this struggle between generations and Mania 9 where the company didn't really know what to do and how to move forward. Take for example Bob Backlund vs Razor Ramon 2. The old guard and the babyface Backlund was booed in favour of the villainous Razor mm -hmm. Ramon, a sign of the times the WWF took way too long to acknowledge. That's usually what they do sometimes now. <laughs> WrestleMania 2 comes in at number 2, taking Damn. place in 1986 from three different locations, New York, Chicago and LA. As mentioned, Cage Match had three different entries for Mania 2, but all three made it to the top 10. I just used the mean score average and it ends up being the second worst WrestleMania in history, according to those who scored all three shows. I always see the first four WrestleManias as experiments. WrestleMania 1 was WrestleMania 1, an experiment in itself. WrestleMania 2 was held in different venues, WrestleMania 3 was to see if WWF that. could sell out a stadium, and WrestleMania 4 changed the whole format by hosting a tournament. You can kinda see that WWF were trying to work out exactly what WrestleMania was gonna be during these early days, and you know, when you hear that an event is gonna get held in multiple venues, it does sound kinda fascinating in a way, but yeah. there's more negatives than positives to Mania 2 and it turns out to be a real dud. 
Booker Dusty Rhodes decided that Starcade 85, held weeks after WWF's Wrestling Classic event, should be held in two locations, the traditional Greensboro Coliseum and the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Many felt that Dusty took McMahon's idea of closed circuit broadcasting and used it to his advantage to broadcast matches from one venue to another. A match would happen in the Coliseum and then the fans would watch a match from the Omni and vice versa. So it's widely believed that Vince McMahon saw this and decided, well if they can do two venues, we can top them with three mm. venues. In comparison to the previous WrestleMania, there would be a lot more celebrities. The roster would get equally split so each venue had its own main event. And just like Starcade fans who bought a ticket to any WrestleMania 2 show would be able to watch the other matches on giant screens inside their chosen venue. So what was the problem? Well, it's hard to explain, but it feels like there's way too much going on at WrestleMania 2, and if you watch the original broadcast of Mania 2, it feels like WWF weren't very prepared in terms of the overall production and presentation of the show. You can see and hear the broadcast team waiting for their cues when switching from one venue to another. Oh. You've got celebrities on commentary who really don't know what they're talking about or anything about the matches they've been paid to discuss. You've got maybe too many matches with quite a few of them being pretty awful such as Mr. T versus Roddy Piper and the abysmal Paul Orndorff versus Don Morocco opener. Though I will say this, in comparison to Mania 1, you've got a lot more wrestlers leaning into their gimmick and in terms of overall character, the wrestlers involved in Mania 2 seem more like superstars if that makes sense. George Steele vs Randy Savage is a fun little 5 minute match, the British Bulldogs vs the Dream Team is a good tag team encounter, and while it's far, far from the best cage match in WWF history, Hulk Hogan vs King Kong Bundy was fine due to its overall simplicity. It's a match that gave fans exactly what they wanted, mm -hmm. and what the fans wanted was Hulkamania running wild. As mentioned though, <laughs> WrestleMania 2 is an experiment, turns out it's a failed experiment that <laughs> WWF wouldn't try again, though think about this. In today's wrestling climate and with WrestleMania now being over two days, do you think WWE may try to do multiple venues again for WrestleMania? Honestly, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility mm -hmm. anymore. I mean, I hope they don't. Just keep it in one venue. But I wouldn't be surprised if Vince want to, you know, kind of double it up. I don't think they do it. should. I think that's a little bit too much. I think WrestleMania should be in one venue for two nights so people can have that moment you know what i'm saying instead of it being shared somewhere else having in one venue for two nights i'm all for it you've probably worked this out for yourself or you probably knew what the worst mania of all time was going to be at the very start of this video so taking the number one spot is the absolute worst wrestlemania of all time according to the guys and girls at cagematch.net it's wrestlemania 11 held Damn. in the hartford civic center in connecticut 1995 wasn't a great year for wwf though i believe we can't call it the worst year in company's history anymore in terms of creativity fans who watch wrestlemania 11 out of choice will try to look past the bad stuff that happened before Damn. and after the pay-per-view and try to enjoy it for what it is but my god it's he a said my task. god i have a kind of personal connection with this wrestlemania it was the first wwf tape i ever bought after Damn. saving up my own money as a kid and you know how it is if it's something that you bought and something you wanted then mm -hmm. you're going to have a slightly biased viewpoint when you sit there and try to convince yourself that something's better than what it really is i had that same thing going on with wrestlemania 11 for a good few years but to be honest yeah it's not good it's pretty bad now, I will always stand by this. Shawn Michaels versus Diesel is a good match. I know there's some nonsense going on heading into the match with some disagreements about how things are going to play out, but HBK getting aggressively competitive while trying to blow Diesel up and Kevin hanging in there to prove he can keep up with Sean, I feel that's pretty entertaining. It's two friends almost trying to sabotage each other in a way but doing it within the confines of what needs to be done, you know? And mm -hmm. while it's absolutely not for everyone, I still find it a fun 20 minute title match that gets unfairly criticised. Kurt Angle was another guy who liked to leverage his conditioning during wrestling matches and he would also try to tire his opponents out just to see if they could keep up. It maybe goes against two guys working together for the benefit of the show, but it does make for some entertaining matchups. 
Back to WrestleMania 11 though, Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow were placed in the main event and this upset HBK and Diesel quite a bit. Wow. LT did surprise viewers with his in-ring offense and Bam Bam was instrumental in making sure the mm -hmm. match turned out fine. But turning out fine isn't really what a WrestleMania main event is all about. Many fans didn't care much for a celebrity main event either. Yeah. It was okay, but in my opinion, it shouldn't have headlined the show. As for the rest of the card, it's absolutely brutal. The <laughs> I Quit match with Bret Hart versus Bob Backlund wasn't good and the Hitman says it's one of the worst matches he's ever had. The Allied Powers versus Blue Brothers opening match has nothing going for it at all. Razor Ramon versus Jeff Jarrett's a letdown and the DQ finish doesn't help matters either. You've got The Undertaker taking part in another bad WrestleMania match, only this time it's against King Kong Bundy. And there's also a tag title change when Owen Hart and mystery partner Yokozuna defeat the smoking guns. That one sounds alright on paper, but Big Yoko was starting to decline around this time period and the match suffers a bit because of it. Mm. Honestly, there's only one reason for me to watch Mania 11 these days and that's for Damn. the title match. The rest I the could probably live that. with never seeing again. You don't get anything out of WrestleMania 11 really and it's not even an empty feeling you're left with. You're left pretty frustrated that you actually took the time to sit down and watch this show. Damn. Sheesh. <laughs> So, do you agree with these rankings? Did the folks over at cagematch.net vote unfairly or do you think it was on the money? Are there any of these WrestleManias that you liked? Let me know in the comments. The great thing about wrestling is that it's very subjective. Of course. And you're going to have a more personal connection to some WrestleMania events more than others. Maybe you remember watching one of these shows with friends or family. Maybe you bought a tape like I did as a kid and you feel a bit more connected to one of these shows. Maybe you even attended one of these shows and you have great memories of the trip and sitting in the arena while watching the matches take place. Whatever the case, let me know because there's really no wrong answers when it comes to things like this and there's absolutely no shame in enjoying something that others don't. Of but course. I'm going to do this again for other events and other promotions in the future, so I'll soon tackle events like Starcade, Survivor Series, ECW events, things like that. I'll also cover the best shows so it's not all negative. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be doing me a massive favor. Hey man, subscribe to Wrestling Bios. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and like the video. Leave a link to the original video. It will be down below. But yeah, I want to, you know, know as well, uh, as he already stated, which y'all, I guess, worst WrestleMania of all time that you've seen sat through. If you can remember one uh, where you, even if you was there in person, you was just like, this was a waste of my time. This was boring. Let me know your worst WrestleMania experience. Worst one of all time. There's plenty to choose from. Not all of them are bad. You know, a lot of them have, uh, you know, uh, I guess you can say things that you can, you know, enjoy and, and, and really appreciate. But there are some that are just like, yo, this is not what's up. I'm not feeling this. So let me know your worst WrestleMania, uh, in your opinion, of all time. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still getting the speed of YouTube wrestling champion world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.